Today we're going to talk about how to install the TFT display on the Big Tree Tech GTR version 1.0. Now I need to let you know that I'm going to be doing several different types of TFTs by Big Tree Tech. This is because a lot of people ask different questions about different types of TFTs that they make. So I'm going to show you the similarities between them and how you can install them. Now I do need to remind you that no one is paying me or sponsoring me to do this tutorial and I will be placing Amazon affiliate links in the description for your convenience. So we're going to start with understanding first of all which TFT displays we can work with and this is my collection of ones that we currently can work with. There's probably even more. So I'm going to point them out real quick. We have the Big Tree Tech TFT24 version 1.1. We also have the Big Tree Tech TFT 3.5 inch, and this is version 3. And then we have the same thing for version 2. And then we have our Big Tree Tech TFT version 3. And that's the E3. Now all of these, we're going to be using the TFT connector over here. This is the side that's going to connect to the board. And this side's going to connect to the TFT. And there's going to be a similarity between each one of these. But they'll all connect to the TFT port located right here. Okay, for this part, what we need to understand for the TFT is I flipped them all over. But there's one port that we connect to for the TFT on any of these displays. And that would be the RS-232 port. So I'm going to point them out here. As you can see over here, the RS-232 is located here on the Big Tree Tech TFT E3 version 3.0. Over here, I have to look kind of closely but I believe it's this one right here because they didn't write it on the silk screen. So you look for the reset TX RX ground in 5 volts. And then if you look over here, we can scan around and we see it located right over here. So you see the reset TX RX ground in 5 volts. And the same goes for this one, but it says RS232. But all of the ports are going to be the same for the connector. So what I've done for the moment is I simplified this down so that we're going to just do one board. And I'll swap these later on for different TFT displays to show you that they all work. But what we need to focus on right now is the TFT connector over here. So I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit better. So... Here's an extreme close-up of the board so you can actually read the silk screen on it. And as you can see, you have over here our 5 volt pin. Then you have your ground pin, your TX data pin, your RX data pin, and your reset data pin. Those are going to matter when you're connecting your pins up. So when we use the TFT cable, for each one of these installs for the touchscreen display setting on each one of the TFTs, you'll be able to actually set it up. And one of the good things about it is you'll actually see that it powers up correctly. There's no way to actually damage your board if you plug it in incorrectly. But what you won't see if it's incorrectly connected is the actual screen power up. To connect this up now, what we need to know is we need to use the notch connection over here to connect to our RS-232 port. So you're going to click it basically in as if it's a notch connection. And then on the other side, we know that this is the reset pin and the pin on the far right is for reset. So we're going to basically just plug them in like so. Now you'll know if you did something wrong because the LCD 
or the TFT will not power up. So in order to test this so that we can actually use USB power, what we're going to need to do is move our jumper over, which is now set to direct power. So we're going to have to lift off this pin for the jumper, and then we're going to place it on the next two pins over and push it down. Okay, to test the power, what we're going to need to do is connect the USB for the big side to the board. So I'm going to connect this over here. Next, I'm going to connect the small side to the computer, and you may hear a beep. And note that the Big Tree Tech TFT powers up. Now, in my case, I've already configured my board, so it doesn't say no printer attached. I'll actually show you how to handle that now. So currently, what we need to do to handle this is we need to actually pop out the TFT or micro SD card right here. And then we need to connect this into our adapter, which I placed over here. So I'm going to take my adapter and I'm going to place the TFT drive in the adapter. And then I'm going to place this inside the computer. So you may hear a beep. So to start with, like always, I'm going to point out that the SD card is now attached to the computer and it only has firmware.cur and in this case cur means current. Notice how it's in all capital letters, that's your current firmware. If you wanted to try and reload this, you would have to rename this to lowercase firmware.bin and it would then reload and change to firmware.cur. But for now, that's not really important. So we're going to go over to VS Code, and I've already downloaded the most current version of Marlin 2.0.6, or it might be 2.6.0, and I'm going to open that up. So I'm going to go to File, then I'm going to say Open Folder because it's an unzipped folder, and it brings me to the Marlin 2.0 folder, but there's another one you have to go one level deeper. Now you're going to collect or you're going to click on select folder. This will open up your project. Now this is just for the TFT setup. So I want to keep that scope in mind for you. So that means I'm just going to show you how to set up a TFT display. I'm not going to go into the steppers. Well, maybe I'll go into the steppers. I'll set them up real quick. But that's just to demonstrate but your steppers may vary so i'm going to click on the marlin folder then the source folder then the core folder inside the core folder i'm going to open up boards.h i'm going to do a search on gtr underscore and that will bring us to our board so i'm going to copy that right here then i'm going to close out of this file and folder and I'm going to go to configuration.h. I'm going to click on configuration.h and I'm going to do a search on motherboard. And our motherboard's right here. It's the default that is loaded for download. So we're going to paste over that because that's what our board is. And I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to change the serial port to negative one. And then I'm going to go down to the second serial port because that's what the TFT will be using. And I'm going to change the negative one that's listed there for the second one to the number three. And that will set up all we need to do for the display right here. So I'm going to set up some steppers because I have two on the board right now. So I can demonstrate how it works. So I'm going to do a search on A4988. And I'm going to uncomment the two steppers that are existing on the board. These are for UART, so I'm going to uncomment them first so that they're enabled. And then I'm going to set TMC2208 for those because that's what's there. And that's all you need to do to set those up. So we need to prepare the compile environment.
So I'm going to go over to platformio.ini. Right now it's set for the basic ramps chipset, but we're using a different one. So we're going to search in here with a control F. We're going to do GTR underscore, and that will bring us to our environment variable right here. So I'm going to copy the environment variable which is big tree underscore GTR underscore V1 underscore zero. And I'm gonna scroll back up to the top and change the default environment to that by pasting it. That's all you need to do to set it up. Now compile obviously is different for this because we're gonna be doing a build, which is also known as compile, but we can't do the upload, which would be a build or compile which then uploads to the board. So we have to use the checkbox because it doesn't send it via USB. So I'm gonna click on that and let it build for a moment. And then after it completes, I'll show you what we'll do next. So now that the compilation has completed, you can see is that it's successful in two minutes and 29 seconds. This time may vary depending upon your computer. Maybe in the future I'll explain ways to speed it up. Let me know if you're interested in that. But uh, what we need to do now is we need to actually copy this. So I'm going to the .pio folder, then to build, then to the GTR folder. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go to Reveal and Explorer. I'm gonna open up the GTR folder. And here is our finished binary file. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to send to and I'm going to send it to the SD card. Now we can confirm it that it's there now and that is your binary file. So I'm going to remove it from the computer and install it in the GTR and I'll show you that in a moment. Okay in order to load the firmware we need to remove from the micro adapter, the SD card, so we can place it in the drive like so. Now, one of the things I've discovered is if this is attached when you're doing this, your firmware will not load. You're gonna have to disconnect your cable for your TFT and make sure that you have your jumper in the USB position because we're loading it via USB power. And so I'm going to connect the USB power to the board. And I'm going to connect the other side to the computer to power it. And you may hear a beep. And then you'll notice a green flashing light where the firmware is loading down here. So now that that's complete, what we can do is disconnect this. Make sure that the drive stays in. And then reconnect your cable. Noting that on the right hand side is your reset, which is the little piece that sticks out. You're going to connect your cable back in to your board. And so that's all you need to do to set that up. Now I'll show you how to test it. Okay, now I've set up a couple of things on the board over here, such as I added the power. As you can see, it's unplugged right now in both connections. So I have my voltage ground, voltage ground. One is for the steppers, the other is for the board logic. And I'm using 12 volts power. Now I also have one fan connected over here. And we need to move the actual jumper so we can use direct power. So I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna move it over to the next two set of pins and then push it down. That'll allow us to power this. So I'm going to close this for safety, and as you can see, I also have steppers over here so that we can watch to see if the EFT display works correctly. So what I'm going to do now is actually energize the system after I connect the USB. So you'll see a light here saying that there's a connection, and then the power will actually come from here. So it's now powering up. So what I want to do is I actually want to test the fan and steppers. 
So I'm going to click on the fan over here. And then I'm going to actually do full power. And as you can see, the fan is now energized and running. So I'm going to stop the fan for a second. And a lot of you might not know, but over on the LCD over here, it says F0, and then it has a zero underneath. F0 is actually P0 in G codes. So if you actually click up over here, what will happen is you're actually increasing the voltage or the power to the fan to run it. So in this case, it doesn't allow you multiple fans. A way around that though is in Marlin in the advanced configuration, which I'll cover in future tutorials. But for now, I want to show you that we can actually use the stepper. So I'm going to click on this for a second. And what I'm going to do is go to move. And I'm going to increase the increment to more than one millimeter to 10. So it's now doing 10 millimeters per step. So we're going to do the X. And as you can see, that moved. Now let's try the Y. And that moved. So now I'm going to show you how it works with other LCDs. So I'm going to hot swap this by opening this over to like here and popping this out. And then I'm going to pop in a different one for an LCD. So we need to find the RS-232. And then we need to connect it correctly. And then we're going to put it down right here. Now I might have a power issue with my cord over here. So it may blink out during the tutorial because I keep banging into it. So in this one, the menu is slightly different on the TFT-32 or excuse me, 35 version two. And this has the unified display. This is what they're doing with new firmware updates to change the actual look and feel. So let's try out the fan again. So let's see if I can find it because it might be somewhat hidden. Of course it says heat and fan. So let's try fan and let's do full power here as well. So the fan appears to work. So I'm going to click on stop. I'm going to go back a menu. And I'm going to see if I can actually find in the other menus movement. So let's go to move and increase the increment from 1 to 10. And then we're going to move the X axis. And then we'll try the Y axis. And everything looks good there. So I'm going to pop this out again. And this time I'm going to try a different LCD. So this is going to be the TFT24 version 1.1. So I'm going to find the port. In this case, it's reset TX, RX, ground, and voltage. And let's see if this works. So we're going to go to the fan settings. We're going to do full fan. And the fan appears to work, so I'm going to stop that. Then I'm going to go back. And I'm going to do movement. I'm going to increase the increment. And now I'm going to do the x-axis, which works. The y-axis, which works. So I'm going to back out of this. And I have to point something out that I haven't pointed out yet. If your stepper or excuse me if it says here that it's not connected for the printer you're going to click on settings and what it usually is is the speed is 115 200 this one is actually matched to the speed of the board when we compiled with marlin so it works out of the box that's something to consider so i'm going to hot swap to another one now and this one is actually the Big Tree Tech TFT 35E3 version 3.0. So I'm going to click on 
the actual connection again here for RS-232. So I'm going to connect it right here. It should power up, no problem. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do the same thing for fan. Then we're going to do full speed. And the fan works. So we're going to click stop. We're going to go back. Back. And we're going to click on move. And we're going to increase the increment to 10 millimeters. And then I'm going to click the X axis. And it moves. And then I'll do the Y axis. And it moves. So as you can see, it works for four different versions of the TFT display. I have other versions that I could cycle through for this for Big Tree Tech. But as you can see, the configuration seems to be solid. Now, I want to take a moment to thank everyone that took the time to watch my tutorial. And please like, subscribe, share, and also click the bell so that you'll know when I finish a tutorial and post it.